So you remember the lovely toaster that I've been building uh, with you guys every once in a while to do a demo. And uh, I actually uh, kind of added something. If you kind of take a look, I, I added um, not just a crease here, but if I go into the, oops, if I go into um, edit mode and I turn off the thing and then go into uh, wireframe mode, I actually see that I added, added kind of like a, a, I don't know, a depression, a valley, whatever you want to call it, so that the body of the, um, the toaster actually goes down below and there's just a slight little gap between the two. Can you guys see that? Okay, and then if I hit the wireframe mode, you can, you can see very easily that I've got, it kind of goes down and in. So what I was thinking when I was doing this was that I wanted the base to be black plastic and I wanted the top of the toaster to be like a stainless steel texture. Now, it's really easy to make it out of two objects if you want to and you can do that. Um, but then we get into parent-child relationships and so on and so forth, which isn't bad, it's just more complicated. Um, <clears throat> making something out of one object, if you can, is probably a good idea. Now, if I go further with this toaster and do like the little slider and all that sort of stuff, those things are probably going to have to be separate objects. But just for the outside of the uh, toaster, here I can definitely do this so that it's all one object. Um, you'll notice that I've applied my mirroring to this uh, object, which you don't have to have done, but it certainly helps. Um, <clears throat> all I'm going to do is I'm just going to collect, actually I don't even need wireframe, I'm going to select all of the faces that I want to be a black color. So, uh, you know, just like a black plastic base here. So I'm just going to go around and highlight them all. Now actually you don't even need to do this, um, <clears throat> but I find that it really helps. So there I've got basically all my vertices, the faces that are selected and the vertices and everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and there's a special object data uh, button here and I'm going to click on that and when you have a mesh object one of the things that you can do is you can assign vertex groups. So I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to call this group the base and I'm going to click the assign button. Okay, And now you'll notice that if I hit the deselect button and then the select button they come back. Okay. This easily allows me to select different groups and you can group vertices by all sorts of things by you know face, arm, leg, I mean you know you, you can do this to help you select and, and, um, and manipulate certain sections or groups of vertices um, and this helps a lot. Now again you don't have to do this to do the next part but it helps. Um, <clears throat> at least I don't think you have to do it. I've always done it. So. Um, so I've grouped them. Now I'm going to go back to my material and here I've got the bumpy metal which is silly because it's not really going to work very well for a, for, um, a uh, toaster but it's a really beat up toaster, a really old beat up toaster, let's just say that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a new material here. So this material here we'll call this um, uh, toaster and I'll say metal. And I'm going to add another one here and then I'm going to hit plus which basically gives me a new layer and then I'm going to hit new. And then this material we'll call this toaster and I'll call this plastic base. And then what I can do here, I'll just fix that, um, is I can go and now I have the ability to add a whole bunch of other colors. So, uh, you know, just make it basically almost black. Um, I can add another uh, texture to it so that's that's kind of nice um, and that's instead of color let's add our normals and take the scale down so it's going to kind of have a uh, like a bumpy texture to it and it doesn't need to be that powerful so we'll just make it kind of subtle <clears throat> um, go back here make my speculars a little sharper so it's kind of like a, a kind of a glossy black plastic. Now if I were to go and render this right now, let's just see what it looks like. <clears throat> Give it a second. I didn't even double check to see where my light was. Oops. It's going. You can see it really it hasn't done much. Um, 
And the reason for that is I need to assign this material to this, the base here. So all you got to do is once you've got those vertices that you want to be a different color, once you've got them selected, and that's what the vertice group helps me do. So, you know, I can just hit the select key and then I can go over here and there's a button right here that says assign. And as soon as I assign that, you'll notice that those, that group of vertices does a, a different color. Now let's go back to our camera and just render out a quick picture here. And you're going to see that now the base of my toaster is going to have that black color, while the rest of the toaster is actually going to have uh, the silver bumpy uh, color. Okay? So this is a really simple way of giving different vertices in the same object different colors. Um, and, uh, and it can be quite useful. Um, you know, to, to, to do. Um, if you've got objects, if you've got separate objects that all make up your one character, so, you know, like if I had built the base separately and then the metal part separately, then I wouldn't really need to do this, okay? But that, for, you know, has a whole different host of problems that we'll have to deal with that we're going to go over um, as well. But for now, if you've built your object out of one big or out of one object, you built your character, I should say, out of one object, and you want different colors in different places, well, here you go. This is an easy way of doing it. Any questions? That's it.